خير ايفريوان ايفريبودي ايفريوير وير ايفر يو ار وير ايفر يو ار جود مورنينج جود ايفنينج جود افترنون جود داي هابي داي هابي مانث هابي مون هابي سان هابي 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته توداي يو ار جوينج تو توك ابوت ا فيري ديفيكالت انترستينج سبيشاليز سبجكت which is what will happen after natural disaster and armed conflict. Sometime, such a natural disaster could be expected, and such armed conflict could be expected. Okay? Or sometime, it might not be expected. It could be sometime eruption happening, a war happening between two communities or two countries. Okay? Or, Actually, a natural disaster happened first time in a certain area. Okay. Uh, let us talk today about what, how, how can we prepare a, in a place where we are expected to have natural disaster every year or every other year or every few years. Or we have a conflict with our neighbors every other year, so we are actually expecting to have these uh, humanitarian disasters. Okay. What will we do? What we have to do during that time? Okay. First of all, in these two conflict, which could be expected because of the armed conflict or because of the natural disaster which is repeated, we have to do the following. The following are we should have in our policy to try uh, to try to build a policy how to deal how to deal with such armed conflicts as well as with such natural or repeated natural disasters number one in our policy we have to create since we are our, 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 our country which is a disaster born country or we have a we have a continuous conflict with our neighbors okay so what to do in the structure of the country, either we should have as a, a, a ministry deal only with humanitarian and disaster response, or we have an independent department or independent committee, national committee, dealing with this uh, 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 humanitarian response, whether it's coming from natural disaster or coming from disarmed conflicts. This is number one. Either a ministry or a department or a, or, or, a, or, a, or or a department or a, uh, 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 committee number two inside every ministry we should have a specialized department or desk dealing with this kind of natural disaster or humanitarian response coming because of the armed conflict and the government or the state has to equip such a department on the national level and on the ministerial level with necessary equipment to deal with both post-conflict, during conflict, or natural disaster, with cars, ambulances, everything, every equipment. This is number two on this. Number three, we should have what we call to create what we call early warning system, independent early warning system to forecast that something would be happening in this area because of the climate change, because of the conflict, the political problems, and, and, and. So early warning system. Number four, we should have in our budget every year a percentage of how to deal with such a conflict a uh, humanitarian response based on armed conflict or humanitarian response based on natural disaster between 5 to 7 percent of the national budget of national budget number five at the level of every municipality okay we should have a small department or a desk okay to deal with such disaster on the residential area why because we need to protect the citizen during the disaster 
Why? Because during that time, maybe a lot of outlaws, ringleaders, bad guys, thugs, could go and steal the houses because the people have left. Or could go and attack the woman because the men are, uh, are dead, whatever it is. This happened when, when I was in, in, uh, in Turkey this year after the earthquake on the 6th of February in Antakya. I went with some colleagues to Antakya on the 14th, I think, or 12th of February, and we found that Antakya was an empty city, a city of ghosts or a city of dead. Nobody was there. All the houses are empty. Then we started to see that actually some of those thugs went to these houses and these buildings and started to steal what's left there. Then we started to have reports about such individual, bad, 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 bad people, bad people started to actually steal what is carried by the people who are left Antakya. So the military went in as well as the security went in to stop that. Last year, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends, the world have seen six disasters in seven locations. That's why a very memorable year. Started with Turkey and Syria, North Syria, in February 6th. Then the armed conflict in Sudan, 15th of April last year, between those uh, Janjaweed or uh, against the uh, 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 National Army. Then went from there to Morocco, earthquake. And from Morocco, earthquake, it, uh, there was another storm affected Derna in northeast Libya. Then after that, there was another earthquake in Afghanistan on 7th of October. There's another, there's this, after that, it's actually 7th of October, actually conflict in Gaza. So six disaster, two are armed conflicts, and four were actually natural disasters affected the world last year. Claimed life of thousands and thousands of thousands. During that time, we have to be very, very careful how to deal with that du during or before. Now I'm talking about how to be prepared before it happens if we knew that our country or our area is disaster born or there's a conflict at the border between us and our neighbor. At that time, we have to be preparing all what I'm talking about. Okay? So coming back to the preparedness is number six or seven for the preparedness. We have to utilize the resources of every local civil society organization, most importantly, the religious ones, such as mosques, temples, as well as uh, churches. Why? Why, why, why I'm mentioning it heavily? Because of the increased number of volunteers who come every day to pray in these worshiping places. Such volunteers have high moral values. I have to include them in my voluntary system. Number two in, in the dealing with, with, the, with the religious institution is they have many buildings which can, and many halls which can accommodate huh, the refugees or the displaced people. Number three, uh, was well, regarding the religious institution, uh, people, when they go to this institution, trust the leadership because they think that the leadership is honest in these ones. So it could become a very good focal point for the people to, uh, to, to, for, 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 uh, to, 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 to meet around this, this institution. Uh, number four is uh, the, 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 the number uh, the multiplicity or the diversity of the social activity that being done by such institution will actually 
let its people, its authority, its volunteers to know basic principles of how to deal with social needs and social work and how to create social impact. Uh, number five is actually people trust this institution no matter what, whether I am a Hindu or I am a Sikh or I am a Rastafarian or I am a Christian or I am a Muslim or I am a Jew, I trust my religious institution. Okay, so with this, that's why I included in the preparedness the 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 the, the principle of getting help or including the religious institution. On the local or national level, also have to create coordinating committees. On the level of the residential area, the village, the town, the city, the, the district, and the national level. And this kind of communication system or coordination system has to be dealing and communicating and coordinating with the security department as well as the relative uh, related department in the military okay so this kind of coordination is a compelling necessity without which the impact of disaster whether from the conflict armed conflict or from the natural disaster would be more and more devastating okay point after that of the preparedness we have to keep training keep training a building the capacity of the people working in the civil society organization. Because we might have the ministry, the ministerial departments, or central authority, but we might have thousands and thousands and the thousands or tens of thousands of civil society organizations which can which should they should help us in this. That's why we have to have in our program, uh, in our program uh, to actually uh, uh, training the people working in civil society organization. Then the state itself have to spread the culture of volunteerism and have to make the, uh, the volunteerism as a subject in the syllabus to be taught uh, theoretically and operationally to the young kids from the primary, secondary, universities, uh, universities and others to tell them engage and to train the volunteers. The state also should build warehouses on the district level, on the town level, on the city level, on the village level, and on the residential area level. Why? Because we should put in these uh, warehouses uh, the, 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 the aid material like tents, blankets, uh, jerry can, and all these kind of things. And we, may, we don't wait till the disaster happened to look for tents or to look for blankets or to look for some uh, non-food items that we can help the people. Then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the 5 to 7% uh, of the budget should be allocated to uh, the disaster. Uh, People might say that's too much. Okay, we can we can decrease it. Depends on the on on what we can spend, and depends on how often we receive uh, we have this kind of, of of conflict. If we did not spend such a, such a percentage, we might actually keep it for the following year. So the the the, the budget of maybe 2023 might actually be most have not spent in 2023. We can keep it for the budget of 2024 and but we do not actually give it to another department okay and uh, and regarding to the natural disasters such as uh, earthquake uh, volcano flooding uh, uh, storm and others we have to know the area which is affected by this disaster and prevent people from living there or building their houses in this area. If there's a flooding, we should, and we knew that this is happening every year or every other year or every few years, we should not build any buildings, whether actually residential or commercial or industrial in such uh, uh, an area. 
or should not build in, in, in an earthquake or volcano area uh, near the volcano uh, actually building uh, in this area. So if we knew that, we have actually to make it a law that we should not actually let people to live in this area. These are what we call how to be prepared to respond to disaster in areas where we expected to see such a disaster, natural disaster, every few years, or there's a conflict at the border with other countries, so we should be also preparing ourselves how to deal with the influx of internally displaced people or the influx of refugees who are going out. Here as a practical example. Don't ever think, brothers and sisters, colleagues, friends, that you give the money today, and tomorrow we'll build the house. No, forget it. Absolutely, this is nonsense. I tell you what, if I give the money on the 1st of January 2024, I expect what? I expect the delivery of the food material within weeks. It depends on the area. The clothes material within weeks or maybe months. But I don't expect rebuilding the houses within month. I was visiting Pakistan last year in October. The Pakistan flood was in 2022. And when I went to Sindh area last year in October 2023, after one year, still more than 90% of the houses has not been built. So when you talk about houses and you give me the money to spend don't ask me about building the house before one year or at the end of the first year. And not only that, in Pakistan, the government has been supported by billions of dollars given to them by World Bank, by other big donors. And still, people are actually reallocating because it's a government. It talks about a million houses. It's not like an organization who is dealing with uh, 10,000 or 20,000 houses. When I went there, Islamic Leaf was in one year, and they built about 15, uh, I can't remember how many, 15 or 40,000 houses. 15,000 or 40,000 houses. But they can't be able to build the 40,000 houses in one year. So if you talk about food, delivering food, delivering clothes, delivering uh, medical, uh, medical equipment, it could be in weeks, but not building a house in weeks or months. It takes more than that. Thank you very much. And uh, this was my first part of responding to this difficult subject. My second part will be about what to do when this disaster affects an uh, area which has not been expected to have it. So I'll meet you. Uh, next week or maybe in whatever uh, time to, to explain to us how to deal with unexpected disasters, whether it's conflict, armed conflict, or whether it's natural disaster. Thank you.